Montgomery. Who's asking? Who's asking? Who's asking? Metropolitan Police. Wow. Right, that's me. Now what about you? Snap. You're with the Met. I know. It's outrageous, isn't it? Miss Montgomery, I'm Detective Sergeant Spender. I'll be in charge of things at this end while you're up here. How do you do, Sergeant? Uh, it's very reassuring all this attention, but I have to say that everyone else is taking these silly little notes a lot more seriously than I am. Well, silly little notes don't threaten people's lives, man. It's probably just a crank, but we get paid to take these things seriously. Don't we, Sergeant? Spender. Oh, yeah. Now I remember. You're the guy who pensioned off his oppo, aren't you? What was his name? Colin something. It was Colin Driver, and it still is his name. Is there anything new on the letter? Not my gig. You're the investigating officer. Remember that. This is my telephone number. If there's anything, anything at all, please ring, okay? Miss Montgomery? Yes. I'm Paul Clough of BBC North. Do you have any time to answer a few questions? Yes, Paul, of course. Where would you like to uh, Would you like to come this way? Aren't you a little bit worried about losing your deposit in the constituency that had a Labour majority of nearly 16,000 at the last election? Well, with all due respect to the late Bob Dash, majorities are not inherited. You have to earn it. And Very over the good. Once again, a twanking for the big lad. And you think you can earn that kind of majority? I know I can. Well, well, let's, yeah, go on, rack them up. It's a matter of a flag. I'm not going anywhere. Two armed men held up a building sign. Here. Here. Don't know how you can take that. It's easy when you've gotten it. Do you want to try us? No. What's Sunderland like these days? Back and land. Good place to be if you're looking to buy a shipyard. Personally, I wouldn't even go there to rob. Oh, that we hate them and they hate us, Palava's not still going on, is it? No, 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 it's not like that anymore. Now it's just we hate them. Nice. It is, isn't it? Mm. Is it real? No. Twelve dollars, Bangkok. Made me went over there on holiday, brought it back for us. Seagull guts in there. Yeah. I wouldn't mind one. Has he got any more? No, that's all he brought back. Apart from his snotty nose, right? Want to sell it? Look nice with my new suit. No, I couldn't. It's a present. It's the first watch I ever had, what I liked. What were you asking about Sunderland for? I've got to go over there and do a bit of work. Work? In Markham Land? That would be a novelty. What kind of work? I'm about to plunge into the heady world of politics. <laughs> Roberta Montgomery. Uh, I'm sorry, my dear. I never get used to calling you Bobby. Roberta, Superintendent Brian Yellen. Hello. It's a pleasure to meet you, Miss Montgomery. I saw you earlier on the news. I was very impressed. Oh, thank you,
I just popped up to assure you that we're going to take very good care of you while you're up here with us. Thank you. I'm sure I'm in safe hands. I'll personally guarantee it. I've assigned a very good man to you, 100%. I was hoping to introduce you to him, but I'm afraid I can't contact him. He's probably out there in the field. Ah, is this your Mr. Spender? Yes, we've already met. If you want to contact him, I have his number. Beautiful, Andrew. That there's Flintlocks. 1789. Made quite a hole in my father's pocket. You know so much about it, I can never understand why you didn't become a dealer. None of my family can understand why I don't do this and don't do that on a professional basis. My father still hopes I'll end up yomping round Northumberland in Wellington boots looking after the estate. <laughs> don't think he quite sees you doing that anymore, Andrew. You mean he's given up on me? No, of course I didn't mean that. Look, um, I must get to bed. Wish me luck. I reckon I'm going to need it. Well, I'm sure you'll be just fine. You never were short on good luck, were you, Bobby? Good night, then. Good night, Bobby. Sweet dreams. Is he, eh? Just and we all know where it all starts from, don't we? Eh? We all know where it all starts from, don't we? Yeah. Eh? The bloody Pentagon, that's right. 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 But the thing to do, I'd string the buggers up from Lampus with piano ways about me. Well, take it easy, Skillet. That was last year's manifesto. <laughs> Not too long ago, the likes of Bobby Montgomery wouldn't have been seen dead around these parts. No, yuppies, Porsches, Filofaxes, ray bands, and worst of all, those bloody mobile telephones. <laughs> <laughs> they, to me, are the physical embodiment of this mire of evil through which we find ourselves waiting. Excuse me. Just need to find a quiet corner. Carry on. Don't wait for me. No stamp. Internal mail. She's getting stuff from Pallium, Smith Square, all over the place. That's a photocopy. Forensic are checking out the original now. No, I meant how come she got in touch with you? I told Miss Montgomery to ring me. She told me. I thought it best if she had my direct line. Why? Spender, I've been behind that desk too long. Time the old muscles were flexed, out there in the thick of it. So, the gloves are off. I am taking the helm. You and I are going to be working together on this one. Why don't you just take it all? I told Dan at the start of this that it wasn't my kind of gig, you know? I'm just too visible. That's exactly why we'll make such a damn good team. I'll take the high profile. You keep your nose in the... In the what? In the gutter. Where it belongs. Spender, I don't want to infringe on your territory. I just think Miss Montgomery's entitled to the best possible protection. Look, if you want to hump this chick, that's cool. Just don't drag me along with you. I mean, I've got rocks to crawl on. That was totally out of line, Spender. Not if we're partners. You're right. But I shall put that remark in my grudge bank and hold it against you another time. So you're godmothering, eh, Belle? I'm keeping her right. 
Any resentment? Why? Well, when Smith Square decided to blood someone like Bobby in a seat like this, it does have a tendency to upset the local party faithful. Not this one. No? I've been doing this for a long time, and I know a good one when I see one. I like her. One, two, testing, testing. Testing, testing. One, two. Testing, one, two. One, two, testing, testing. Vote conservative. Vote for a better Montgomery. Yes. Testing, one, two. Right, I'll uh, follow you in the car. Are you sure you don't want to come along with us in the van? Yes, sure. Listen, um, I'm really glad you're here. Getting that note up at the house kind of shakes one up, doesn't it? Oh, you better have one of these. No, I won't, thanks. Wrong colour? I wouldn't really go with a tie, would it? So? Let's go thump the stump. The Conservative Party offer you the opportunity of electing Bobby Montgomery, who will put the needs of local people first. We pledge ourselves to work for a better design and better funded Pallian Town Centre and not to destroy Pallian Town Hall. We will create more nursery places. We will change secondary education to start at 11. We will create three sixth form colleges and we will raise education standards. We will improve the services provided by both girls. Meals on wheels, shelter accommodation. And we will support the care of our needs. Oh, I have been expecting you a lot. Hello. I'm Bobby Montgomery, your conservative cat. Albert Dullman, how do you do? Look, pet, can you do anything about this bugger? I'm sorry? Me hitman woman. I need a new one. How can I get doing to get it sorted out, man? Bloody cues. Can ye de out for us? Albert, I'd be lying to you if I said yes. But what I can promise right. you is another... Right, well, we're off. There's something I'd like to say to you about you and your so-called family values. The stink! Do you hear me? The stink! You know that, do you? Eh? you know I know them that she's living with, the Headleys. The bastards are notorious, man. They made all the money off the backs of Pittman. Twelve-hour shifts, 14-year-old band, you can't tell me. That was a hundred years ago, man. Now, well, it wasn't that long ago my dad was working for them, though. Well, it couldn't have been down the pit. They're all closed. Exactly, pal. Exactly. Why don't you save all this rhetoric for your boy scouts back at the pub? Hmm? Oh yeah, you. You fascist bastard. <laughs> oh, I can see a car, did not it? Doesn't seem to have done yours any harm, none whatsoever. Oh, they need the exercise. I haven't done any walking for ages. Thank you. I usually try and get them to help with heat once a week. Do you spend his neck of the woods, you know? Oh, really? I used to plod to be round there many moons ago. Go. Oh. Excuse me. The burden of high command. Hello, Yellen. You have a little problem with Mr. Yellen, don't you? I'd be doing things slightly differently had I been on my own, which is normal. You don't think much of what I'm trying to achieve here no. either, do you? Well, that depends you just what you're trying to achieve, doesn't it? What do you mean? Well, when I see you yeah. stood outside those shipyard gates, dressed in your comme de garçon outfit, chatting away merrily to what's left of the local workforce, I don't kind of wonder just whose interests you're trying to serve. You know what I mean? Theirs? Or your own? Thanks. Thanks. You did ask. Take the kids to the pictures. Come on, 
sit down. Mate. How are you feeling, lad? Pissed off. At screwing up. Hey, hey, you saved Miss Montgomery's life. Her life should never have been put at risk. And that was my fault. Well, the chief thinks you did great. He talked about making this a permanent thing. Well, that's just what I need. Spender in Yelland. Lethal weapon three. The skip wagon turned up. Abandoned. False number plates. Belongs to a... An Ian Rutherford. All his contractor. Didn't even know it was pinched till we got on the blow at the one. Forensics are doing the thing on it right now. Do you know anything about him? This Rutherford guy. Clean on paper. Word on the street is that there's no word on the street. That all depends who you talk to, doesn't it? Well, did you get a look at the driver? No, I was a bit preoccupied at the time, Dan. Is it true what they say? You know, when a thing like this happens, the whole of your life just flashes before you in the wink of an instant. I've seen it all before. How's the champ? He's still awake. I hope you've got a big padlock for the pharmaceuticals. Fresh from the flower beds? I thought that count. Oh, look at that. Unemployment's still rising. You had your dinner yet? Mm-hmm. Why? I come down here as soon as I got your call. I'll ring room service, shall I? You ever heard of a guy called Ian Rutherford? No. What should I have? He's a haulage contractor. He owns the skip wagon that... Bastard. You want these wagons torched? No, no, nothing like that, man. I just need to know if there's anything I need to know. Okay. Do you want me to ring Francis? Can I borrow a pen off your pet? See that he gets that, will you? Okay. The accident occurred this morning when Bobby Montgomery, the conservative candidate in the Pallian by-election, was crossing the road near a cafe where she'd stopped early for tea. It's not clear at the moment exactly what happened, but at least one person is in hospital. A family of four were killed. Mm. You should think very carefully, Bobby, about campaigning a little less strenuously. Leaving yourself so exposed. Well, I can't. I either see this thing through or I quit. I don't understand why this whole thing has been made up to look like an accident. We know the truth, and I'm sure you'd be a lot safer if everybody else did too. Yes, Mother. But it wouldn't help Bobby in the polls, would it? I think that's a very cynical point of view, Andrew. It's a fact of life, Mother. Am I wrong, Bobby? Sadly, no. It won't do you any harm to get your feet up on the mantelpiece for a few days. And if you're okay by the weekend, Doris and I are having a barbecue. Bring the kids. And Francis. Dan, I've got enough on my plate at the moment, thank you, without barbecue bangers in pegs, would you know? Oh, I see. Well, fair enough, thank you. You can strike all the opposition up the list, apart from a guy called Skillet. He seems to have some kind of personal beef with the Headley family. Spender, you yeah. got knocked down 12 hours ago. You're certified sick for the next seven days, and you're not supposed to be using your car. Insurance Dad. wise. Look, I've got a pain in the arm and a pain in the ribs. And the last thing I need right now is a pain in the arse. Well, this isn't me speaking. This is down to Yelland. You've already been replaced. What? They put Alan Franklin on it. 
Franklin, I've heard about him. Oh, he's a good bloke, smashing darts player. Oh, well that's all right then, isn't it? Well, he made that big car a few months back, you know, all those stolen suits from Marks and Sparks. Dan, even a blind squirrel comes across the audio echo on every now and again. What are you doing here? I came to see how you were. I uh, wanted to come to the hospital, but Mr. Yelland advised me against it. Come in. Thank you. Shouldn't you be over there, banging the drum? Yes, I'm on my way there now. Sit down. Thank you. I'm just downstairs waiting for me in the car. He's insisted on accompanying me to Sunderland yet again. Oh yes, Andrew. He's a nice little time of things, doesn't he? Just potters around. Polishes his cars, polishes his guns, some life. Well, it may seem like that to an outsider, Sergeant, but actually it is all relative. Well, that kind of depends on just who your relatives are, doesn't it? Look, I only came here to say thank you. Save it. That's what I get paid for. Anyway, it was my fault you ran off like you did, wasn't it? I crossed the line, allowed it to get personal, and that was well out of order. I'm glad you did. Look. We're working together, we're spending most of the day together, it should get personal. There's no reason why you should act like one of those performing monkeys I've got down at Smith Square. Your chin's dripping. Oh well, yeah, I was just in the middle of trying to have a one-handed shave. And it's not easy. Do you want to borrow this? How are you? Ah, <laughs> I know you. I've seen your mugshot on the lamppost. Hey, you look just like your face. Yeah. You've just had a glimpse of the real northeast. Let's go. Listen. Thanks. I appreciate it. Bye-bye. I always fancy humping some of the Posh tackle, you know? Hey. Just knock it, okay? Hey, I come round here to tell you what I've got, and I'm trying like a pariah. Is that the word, or is that a fish? Just get on with it. Well, I've had to. Yeah, what about him? I don't think twice about torching his wagon. He might have no form, but he's a right evil bastard by all accounts. Can't even get anybody to graft on him. In Sunderland? It's a measure of his lunacy. Do you know any good forgers? Good forgers? Mm-hmm. No, you're asking. Ah! I've got just the kitty. Yeah? Hey, you remember him? Walter. 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 Walter? Jet Brack hair. Looks like a Comanche. Married the last one, Gateshead. Well, is he any good? Good hand his drawings in the National Gallery. What's he like on the licenses? Piece of piss. Rattle them off with his eyes closed. Plus one. So how come you want to drive skip wagons, Mr. Baldwin? Because at the moment, you're hiring. What's the matter with working away? There's always plenty of long distance work about. Being aware. Had enough of that for a while. And I'm in need of some funds. You know what I mean? Like urgently. That we are. Where do you get this? What for, like? Don't be a clever shite, son. I think better things come out of lucky bags. Does it matter? Maybe not. When was the last time you worked? What driving you mean? Three years ago? What have you been doing for the last three years? I've been on holiday. You haven't got much of a tan. 
No, well, the sun doesn't shine much in solitary. Solitary? Is that in the Caribbean? I wish. Start in the morning. Half past six. Seven day week if you want it. Sharp house on the Saturday. The wagon stay here at night. Twenty cards in? I know. Do I have a choice? Right. See you in the morning then. Boss. Hi, how are you doing? I'm fine. God, what an ugly fat. That's awful on its way to the dump. I thought you were on sick leave. I took this job for a reason. I don't know if it was a grudge or a crank or... But I don't think the person who sent you those letters was the same person driving around Sunderland in a skip wagon. I think somebody was hired to do that. You mean a hitman? That's a little far-fetched. Well, somebody certainly hit me, didn't they? And I've got a score to settle with that bastard. Well, I could have donned a cloth cap and a pair of Pittman's boots, but this is the 1990s. People are much more politically aware. They can see right through that kind of thing. No. Practicing for wage negotiations, are you? You're bothered about what sort of graft you do. How do you mean? I've got something on the go. Here's a guy that can handle an Arctic. Short notice. Big wages. I'm your man.
Where to? See him harbour. Keep your right. It might be an idea to turn those hazards off, eh? Not far to go now. Thank God. What's the package then? All you gotta do is hook up to a trailer, right? We manage that, can you? Yeah, yeah, no problem. Where are you gonna be? Don't worry about me, right? I'll not be far away. Here, put that on. Right, pull over. Keep it running. What now? Now we wait. We're on a double yellow, mind. Get in the back there, and then you get going. Details are on there. And listen, drive carefully. The last thing I want to be looking at is a bloody policeman. Right? Demanded in custody until the date has been set for your committal. Take them down. So, the only person who could have led us to where we want to be. And now he's banged up. Well done. Just a minute. He's banged up along with three other armed robbers. The post office flag got knocked on the head. No one got hurt. No one ended up in hospital. Other than me, again. Excellent. But slightly irrelevant, Spender, as the person who paid him to get Bobby Montgomery is still out there. And the by-elections today. Look, well, I'm on the case, okay? Spender, you're on the sick. Yeah, and you know what's got me sick? 
wading through all of your crap. There's nothing at the end of it other than more crap from you. Sergeant, I never want to hear you say anything like that again. Well, stay in your office and out of my way, sir. Are you so desperate to be out of this job? By the time his trial comes round, he'll be looking for a bit of plea bargaining, trying to cough for a shorter stretch. He's bound to start yakking. Yeah, but that's a way down the road, isn't it? I need to know, like, today. They threw you off the case. They've even snatched your car back. So why don't you just chill out? Chance to get away from it all. This is where we're going tonight. If I was to do that, I'd be arrested, wouldn't I? Just keep to me. Give you a hand. I wish I knew myself. There's good news and there's bad news. Stick. The good news is that I'm going to Sunderland. Yeah. The bad news is I'm going in that. That's alright. I'll get a taxi home. You're not going home. Cornelius Peter James, 1014. <laughs> Dawson Emma Jane. 2024. Spender, what are you doing here? You're off this job, aren't you? Roger Randall. Have you seen Andrew Headley? No. Why? Montgomery, Roberta Louise, 6,352. Tony Cliff, David Ross, 14,911. I declare David Ross Tunnicliffe to be the newly elected Member of Parliament for this constituency. <laughs> the Conservative lassie got murdered. What? Yeah. Just been on the box there. Labour landslide. Please. Don't do that. Labour has been predicted, but massive inroads made by the Tory candidate predict big things for Bobby Montgomery in the future. That's you, John. Remember me? Yeah? Good. Now listen, I don't mean being called a bastard, but I do mean being called a fascist, right? 
and I take exception to being spat on. I mean, you know, is that any way for civilized people to behave? Hmm? Is it? No. no. I am the police. I'm not. I'm just come to add a little moral support. Thank you. Can I buy you a drink? Best offer I've had all day. Yes, to you. Congratulations. Congratulations? I lost, remember? I think 6,000 votes in Pallion is a considerable victory. I think I'd rather drink to someone who saved my life. 6,000 votes seems fairly meaningless compared to that. Well, I'll just drink to getting you on that train in the morning. Are you so keen to get rid of me? No. But the job isn't finished. And it doesn't finish when you get on that train. I know who it is. And I think you do, too. I'm sure I don't. Well, whatever. But as soon as you're on that train, I'm going to bust his ass. If I'm going to be on that train. Well, you'll be on it. I'll put you on it myself. Unless Yellen's ordered you a limousine for the morning or something. Your Mr. Yellen invited me out to a candlelit dinner. No. <laughs> I sent Belle along there instead. I wasn't very fair. I'm Belle. <laughs> Can I buy you one? No, no, I'd better not. I've, um, got one last meeting. Some other time? I like that. Spender! Listen. I was talking to a friend of mine down the road yesterday, Sam Sumner. I know Sam. Yeah, he told me. He also told me what went down the night your ex oppo got his head stoved in. Turns out that what I've been told was a bit off the mark. You're saying nothing I don't already know? Well, I'm saying it anyway. You know why I asked you here, don't you? For one farewell. Hardly. I suppose I'm your last appointment. It's rather like when I was in London. You never had time to see me then. Only the once at your office. You squeezed me in like a constituent with a tiresome grievance. Oh, for God's sake, Andrew. Cambridge was a long time ago. The world's moved on since then. The waste of the world, Mark. I always thought I'd be your friend. I never thought I'd just become an obligation. I know what you've been doing. Do you? You mustn't love me, Andrew. <laughs> you really shouldn't hate me. You're wasting your life and you're not helping mine. If you've known it all along, very brave of you to have me up here. In the middle of the night. Or your mind is tucked up in bed. You can't frighten me. Don't you remember? In there. Been in there half an hour. I just thought, that... don't run away. There's 47 pound on this meter. Bobby! What the hell do you think you're doing? What a 
am I doing? Oh, what am I doing? What's he doing? Huh? I get up here, the door's locked, I hear screaming. He's obviously been wearing into you. The door was locked because this is business. Family business. Not anymore. No, it's police business. Just a minute. Where's the collar? Hmm? Isn't he going along? Isn't that kind of customary? Hmm? Miss Montgomery said she didn't want to press charges. Said she felt it was just an emotional tiff. Dan! Oh, that's great. That's great. That's marvellous. First of all, the guy who we want out is kept in. Now, the guy who should be in is kept out. So once again, justice takes its course. Unimpeded. Huh? Here. When you get back to Clayton Street, throw that in the bin, will you? I just want to know why. Because he's not well, he's sick. Oh, right. So, nothing's gone right for him since he left Cambridge. Sending him to prison's not going to help. Don't suppose it would help you much either, would it? Tacky story like this in the Sundays. Rejected suitor, violent revenge. Absolutely, it wouldn't help at all. Well, doesn't it bother you that he's being allowed to walk? <laughs> he's hardly being allowed to get off scot-free. Oh, yes. Yes, this five-star clinic in Geneva that Daddy fixed up for him. That's some punishment for a guy who tries to kill you. Twice. Oh, I don't think he'd have taken it all the way. Andrew's weak. He always was. And now he's gone away and I've got a career to resume. Well, look, don't take it too personally. Police work is like politics. Some you win, some you lose. If... Uh... You do decide to return to civilization. Give me a call. You know, I think you acted a bit hastily last night there. It stinks, Dan. The whole deal. You try and do your best. Try and do the right thing. And it all just comes down to this. One more walk over. I now find that Sir John sits on the local police authority. It's just a waste of time, you know what I mean? I know you take it for real, Spender. Take it hard. But you're not the first copper to think it's not right, it's not enough. We all think that sometimes. It's just that some of us have to think of it more regularly than others. Anyhow, in case you change your mind, I'll leave this here. Spender tomorrow at 5 past 11, but stay with us for a classic series here on UK Drama. Secret Army is after the break.